We aren't interested in uh, whether or not the accusations against Vice President Biden are accurate or not. Senator, how damning is this document to the sitting U.S. president? Well, it's uh, I, I, I don't know that. And but that's you, what we but need. You've to read it. I read it. Uh, let's put it this way. There's accusations in it. Where is that informant today? Where are these whistleblowers? Well, unfortunately, uh, we can't track down the informant. This oligarch the, the, is a high-ranking, was a high-ranking member uh, or owner of Burisma? Yes, that is exactly right. So have you, you had have the you tape had any that you just showed. With him? Unfortunately, nobody's had any contact with him for the last three years. So the Republicans, to put it mildly, have been obsessed with promoting and investigating a bogus, debunked conspiracy theory that Joe Biden, as vice president, took millions of dollars in bribes from a foreign national. House Republicans, specifically the chair of the House Oversight Committee, James Comer, threatened the FBI director with a contempt of Congress vote if he did not show them some unsubstantiated whistleblower form. And now the latest Republican bombshell? Well, that revelation is that there is, or at least several audio tapes between Joe Biden and an executive from the Ukrainian firm Burisma that prove once and for all that Joe Biden took bribes while serving as uh, vice president in the Obama administration. Except, here's the thing, they're not so sure that those tapes actually exist. There are two recordings from yep. with with on one end of this phone line or whatever is Joe Joseph Robin o. Biden and another is someone from Burisma yes because Biden has said unequivocally time and time again I have nothing to do with Burisma I know nothing about it and you Chuck Grassley yep. has heard yep. his voice on these recordings so Grassley has not heard them. What Grassley has done is he's the only senator who's read an unredacted version of, of the FD-1023. So he's read the report, and the report alleges that these recordings exist. We don't know for a fact that that's true. So these recordings are legit. You can confirm they are legitimate. Well, they, they were, I can confirm they were listed in the 1023 that the FBI redacted. I we see. don't know if they're legit or not. So it's quite apparent that the whole Republican boondoggle is falling apart. And here's the thing. They are getting pretty defensive about it. Watch. You have the liberal media like MSNBC with their low IQ audience that, that, that are sitting there and, and they're being told bad things about me and members of the oversight committee because we have the audacity to investigate. MSNBC makes fun of me when I said that there are a lot of people that were involved in uh, the Biden shenanigans that, that are, are currently missing. Yeah. So, look, it, it is against that backdrop of what you just heard there of uh, missing witnesses, an uncorroborated report, a bombshell audio tape that may or may not exist. That Congressman Dan Goldman of New York, who actually sits on the Oversight Committee that is investigating the president, debunked the Republican conspiracy theory. Did the majority actually find some actual evidence of wrongdoing by the president? Of course not. But it's even worse than that. This document that they will not stop talking about is shockingly just a three-year-old secondhand hearsay, uncorroborated rehashing of Rudy Giuliani's bogus allegations that he got from Ukrainian, corrupt Ukrainian officials. Now, we all know that former President Donald Trump was impeached because he tried to extort President Zelensky to announce an investigation into this Ukrainian company Burisma that would benefit Trump's political campaign. The theory goes that then Vice President urged Ukraine to fire its prosecutor general because he was investigating Burisma and the president wanted to help his son who was on the Burisma board. You know where Rudy Giuliani got this information from? That fired prosecutor general himself, the corrupt prosecutor general. And we know with absolute certainty now that the truth is exactly the opposite. And to be very clear, then Vice President Biden executed official United States foreign policy shared by the EU and the IMF to urge Ukraine to, Ukraine to fire the prosecutor general because he was not prosecuting corruption in Ukraine. 
Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett is a Democrat of Texas who serves on the Oversight Committee. She joins me now. Congresswoman, it's great to see you again. Thank you for making time. Um, what do you make of this, of this nonsense from the Republicans? I mean, this recycled Giuliani-created conspiracy theory that now seems to be at the center of this Republican obsession. <laughs> I mean, the Republicans are like good at distractions, and that's exactly what we have. Um, it is so unfortunate that they're talking about what they read, but let me make it very plain for the people that are watching. Um, the very first document that we read specifically said that we are not to disclose what it is that we're reading. So I'm going to tell you that for some reason, I don't really trust their ability to actually read and take in what it is that they've read because the very first page said do not talk about the content. And so all I will say, because as Democrats, we like to follow rules, is that uh, their rendition of what was in this document is a little different from what I read in this document. Now, granted, I did read the redacted version. I've read redacted documents for years and years and years practicing law, but I'm telling you, I don't think that those few black marks that I saw had all this information that the senator has been talking about. And I also want people to understand. What they like to do is they want to deflect and say, no, 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 forget Trump, what about Hillary? No, 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 forget Trump, what about Biden? Well, what about them? Let's be clear, neither one of them have been indicted for any wrongdoing, yet they've both been investigated extensively, and the president is still currently being investigated. But you know what? I can almost guarantee you, I would put money on it, that at the end of the investigation that is currently taking place with the president and his ability or, or his handling of the classified documents, I can tell you that he most likely will not end up facing the number of charges that Trump is facing. I just call me, you know, Miss Cleo. Uh, but I don't <laughs> believe that he will end up facing a similar fate. Well, let me just say, it's on brand for Republicans, to your point, it's on brand for Republicans to not be able to follow the rules and to give up what is considered to be confidential information, whether it's Trump holding on to these documents in Mar-a-Lago or, as you were just saying, the Republicans reading a document from the FBI that they were told not to disclose and then turn around and broadcast it on, on TV. But it kind of makes me wonder, th th as you said, this is about politics, more or less, and I'm kind of... Uh, putting words here in your mouth, but tell me about this, because I think Republicans are doing this or pushing this the same way they pushed Benghazi to try to lower Hillary Clinton's numbers. That's what Kevin McCarthy at the time said. And now they're trying to do this to hurt Joe Biden politically. Am I wrong? No, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's nothing but a game for them. And the problem is that we have real lives on the other side of this game that they're playing. Um, and, and, and I do want to go back really quickly to something that you just said. We should not trust Republicans with any secrets. Right. I mean, if y'all haven't realized that from seeing all the boxes in the bathroom, just listen to this nonsense. And 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 at the same time, we also should not expect the truth out of the Republicans. Because theoretically, I guess technically, they haven't necessarily disclosed everything that was in the documents. Because honestly, some of this stuff they're talking about, I'm like, that wasn't in there. That, that wasn't in there. And another good point to be made about the document uh, is something that Dan Goldman was bringing out. I want people to understand the timeline. This is, I think it was three pages total. It was basically two pages and then a portion of another page um, that we reviewed. And as far as the timeline is concerned, we're talking about someone recounting something that was told to them at least three years after allegedly um, mm. they were told this and they had all these details in their mind and whatnot. And also to be clear, as my ranking member who can be trusted with the truth, Jamie Raskin, he laid it out and made it clear that it's not that this information came and then it was just thrown away. It was actually Trump's administration. It was Trump's DOJ that received this information and they followed through and there was nothing to follow through with.